you're a dating expert, mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of men who complain that actually dating is now impossible because if you try and make a pass at someone, if you try and indicate that you're in interested, put my, maybe a hand on a knee, you could be accused of sexual harassment, lose your job. I mean, I don't and know. And your reputation. I'm not quite sure what men you're speaking about because the men that I know and the men that I deal with, they have absolutely no problems in the confidence that their approach is correct and gentlemanly. The only people are moaning are the loser men who have predatory tactics to go out and get a woman into bed. No one else is moaning. Like, the confident guys are like, this is a good thing, Me Too's a good campaign, and it's good for women to speak out because they never realise how much and prolific sexual harassment is in and out of the workplace. Well, Ella, are you speaking to men who are nervous and yeah. are afraid? Yeah, definitely. I think that it doesn't take a kind of loser to be nervous about this. I think, actually, there's also nothing wrong with going out and trying to get someone into bed. Lots of us have done it many times, and certainly you might be a dating expert. I've been on a lot of dates, and I can definitely tell you that there is a fear between the sexes now, and I think Me Too has exacerbated that, that normal behaviour, flirting, heavy commons, gets con constituted as kind of some serious misconduct, yeah. which is absolutely wrong. Touching someone's knee and being inappropriate shouldn't be classed as normal behaviour. That is not normal. Really? I don't no want, yeah, I don't want you to touch me. No one's ever touched your knee. I don't want... I don't want... You've never been on a date where at some stage the guy has made a move and you've either accepted it or rebuffed it. If you, if you touch my knee and I put your hand yeah. away and then you come back again, mm -hmm. that is inappropriate yeah. so really and that different. shouldn't be normalised. Yeah, no, that's, and that's really different from, you know, when someone is uh, flirting with you and you make it clear that you don't want to engage in that sexual relationship and then they carry on, mm. that's bad behaviour. It's not necessarily sexual harassment, but that's bad behaviour. Right. It's poor I also, manners. I also think there is an issue where we're talking about it as if all of this sexual harassment has occurred within a dating context. Mm. Yeah. The point about it is that it was not within a dating context. Context. A lot of this was in business meetings when people, when women were at work, when they thought they were meeting a contact to discuss you know, a potential story. They didn't think they were in a, an environment where yeah, they were going I mean, to just, experience. And, and come on, I'm really worried about this kind of policing of the workplace because I certainly have enjoyed some workplace flirtations in my time. Forty percent what... of all romances apparently begin in the in the workplace. Well, there is that, but I think we're in pushing for the Me Too thing to carry on, and it is a kind of really scalp hungry pushing and very for the Me yeah, Too pushing campaign. for the Me Too. No one's pushing hang for on, it. Hang on, Women push... are coming out and telling no. stories of incidences they have been sexually Actually, assaulted and no, no, harassed. Let, no let me jump in. Let me jump in. It's the, the problem, it seems to me, which is the problem highlighted in this open letter from a lot of very prominent women in France. Well, France French women clearly have a different view about this to a lot of people here, mm. a lot of women in America in particular, right? What they're saying is that there's a real danger, if you're not careful, of conflating rape, sexual assault and very serious sex crimes with what they describe as the normal human interaction between men and women. And that, that's dangerous. That actually, you don't want to stop What's the romance. It is yeah. sexual harassment yeah. and that not being normalised. But that's what dangerous. about sexual but harassment. Men having no, boundaries do you feel comfortable, is not dangerous. Do you feel dangerous. comfortable that, that normal rules of law are being completely abandoned in all this? So basically, any woman can go on any social media platform, make any allegations, is, is presumed to be automatically telling the truth, People are not actually going through any court process. Absolutely not. They're and actually losing that... jobs, they're having lives written yeah. and so on. Do you feel comfortable with that? Because they Absolutely don't. Absolutely not, women. of course, because any woman that makes a false allegation should be dealt with swiftly and harshly by the court. But that's it the point of the letter. Sorry, the sorry, point sorry, of the letter is the due, the due process is being forgotten here. I think everyone agrees there's been a massive problem. Certainly, I mean, Hollywood's just outrageous. No, not necessarily way, everyone on. agrees. Hang on, it's not necessarily it's that everyone problem, agrees. There's still been a problem, isn't there? There is st people still... That rape still happens and sexual harassment still happens, not on the epidemic levels that you're talking about or the Me Too campaign is talking about. That's still a conversation we need to have. But we're not talking about crimes here. We're not talking about people going to jail. We're talking about people touching knees, sending well, no, dirty texts. Hang on, uh, but hang on, hang the on. Me Too, hang but on. Hang, no, no, the, let, me, let me... The point I was going to make... Yeah, no. Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey have almost certainly veered into criminal behaviour. I mean, and we yeah, will find that out when the police investigations finish. So, actually, that's not correct. I mean, the point is that... And, again, the point that Catherine Deneuve and others are making is you've got these appalling predators mm. and then you've got a lot of other cases that are now 
popping up where there's an automatic presumption mm. that the man is guilty without any real due process. But the Me Too campaign is not talking anymore specifically about Harvey Weinstein. It is mm. talking about all men. And it is pathologising, hang on, it it's is criminalising sexual behaviour. Absolutely not. The Me Too campaign is about women's personal experience of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Mm. There is absolutely no the majority chance it's of women, all The majority men. of women, That's certainly in the UK, and wrong. the majority of women, I think, certainly in the UK and the West, are kind of sick of this really patronising attack on sexual behaviour. Actually, I think we what can, they're I sick think, of is being sexually no, we harassed, can harassed we can and handle behaviour. Women, I, I find this so insulting, the idea that women can't handle the sexual interaction between mm. men. Of course, when we it gets serious, it, but we finish. don't want it. Let me finish. When it gets serious and when it goes into what you were describing as someone continuously trying it on with you, getting physical, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But managing sexual interactions in come-ons, flirting, sometimes which can be really candid and mm -hmm. awkward, mm -hmm. we can handle that. I yes, mean, I think that's a really patronising view of women. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a patronising view of women. We can take it, we just don't want it. Yeah. And the difference is, is men need to learn boundaries and what's oh, appropriate no, in terms no, no, of, no. if I'm with my girls, I don't want a guy to ogle me. Well, if I'm with, I don't, if I don't want your attention and I don't want you to come on to me, th then I don't want you to come on to me. Oh.